Hi, in this video I'll show you how to create a Gantt chart to track time in one day. So this is an example of where we have multiple tasks and we have a Gantt chart. And in this Gantt chart we can change our time to visualize how the different tasks represent or how kind of how they spread out during the day. So maybe if we had this first task and we changed it, let's change it to 8 to 10 a.m. Right? And you notice that the blocks here are blocked off for 8 to 10 a.m. And you can see the different span of times here. Now, another way that we can use this is to kind of visualize the employee schedule. So let's say that we made this an employee name, right? And we call this uh, name one instead, right? Name one, control enter to stay in the cell. Let's double click to autofill and double click the fill handle here to uh, autofill that down there. Now we can use this as a representation of a daily schedule for employee to see where the times overlap. So let's say name one, they work until 5 p.m., right? And name two, they're nine until uh, 3 p.m. No, 3 p.m., space p.m. And you can see where the particular employees overlap. And let's say this, this person only works four hours, right? So they do two, 10 to two, and you can see where they overlap and where they don't overlap. And you can create an employee schedule. Let's see how we can create something like this, whether we want to do a Gantt chart for time, for task, or a kind of scheduling tool, a Gantt chart for scheduling. Let's see how we can do this. Create a new worksheet here. And I'm just going to bring over, let's, let's create it from scratch, actually. And let's go with the employee analogy, right? So we'll use this for employee. I'll type name and I'll type name one and click back there and just bring the fill handle here. Let's just get five names here. And let's do the time in and then time out. Right? And we'll we'll kind of fill these out as we go. And let's assume that we have a schedule of eight to five. So if I type eight AM eight zero zero AM you'll notice that it kind of types that in there for me. And it's because I've created a custom uh, format. And let's say that this was general, right? Uh, in, in essence, when you're, when you're looking at time, Excel sees it as a decimal. There's 24 hours a day, 60 minutes for each hour. This point three 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 actually is the time uh, of the hour in a 24 hour day. So if we do, let's say, 8 hours divided by 24 equals 8 divided by 24, you're going to get the same thing, 0.333. So that's the hours in a 24-hour day. That's the way Excel sees time. But in terms of how it's displayed, we can have it generate a display. And what I did was I went under the custom number format and created a representation of that decimal. And what I chose is a representation of that decimal. And it's going to be represented in this type format, hour, minute, a.m., p.m. So you can see here it says 8 o'clock a.m., right? So I click that, and that's the representation of that decimal. I can drag this fill handle to copy it. You can see as it, as it copies over, you see 9 a.m., 10, 10 a.m., and I'll just go all the way up to 5 p.m. Let's assume an 8 to 5 hour day. Now, if we want to do a half hour too, what we can do is in the second cell here, I can type 8 uh, 30, oops, a.m., press enter, and I can select these two, and now they're going to go into half hour increments. You can see that it goes into half hour increments. But let's stay simple here. Let's just do with uh, one hour increments. So I'll type 9 a.m. here. And I'll just copy these two, select these two, and just copy it over until we end up at 5 p.m. And let's delete this. Select this and press delete. And what we need to do here is just, let's just type up some, um, I'll type up some random numbers, right? 8 a.m. and timeout, maybe this is 5 p.m. Uh, time in to, let's make this 9, 9 a.m. And we'll make this... Uh, maybe 4 p.m. and 1 p.m. and this person probably only works till 5 p.m. Name 4. This may be also 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. 
And the last one here, let's make this uh, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m., All right? So what we want to do here is select my range here and apply something called conditional formatting. So under the home key, under the home ribbon, we'll go to conditional format and choose new rule and choose use a formula to determine which cells to format. And under here, we're going to type a function or a formula. I'm going to type and, and what the and function does is it looks to see if the arguments within the and function are true. And if it's true, it will execute what kind of output you, you have there. I need to enclose it in open parentheses. And what I want to say is there's a couple arguments I want to see if it's true. I want to see if this particular value is greater than or equal to uh, this value. Is 8 o'clock greater than or equal to 8 a.m.? And if that is true, it's going to apply some formatting here, which I'm going to select later on. What I want to do here is make sure that I have dollar signs only in front of specific cells. You can see here there's a dollar sign in front of the D and the 1. Since I selected it for this total range, when it copies it or ex executes it for this range, you want it to apply it um, respective to that range. So in this particular example, I want to say D1, which is here, is equal to B2. Now as it copies over, I want that to be not D1, but E1 and F1 and G1 respectively. So I need to put the dollar sign in front of the 1 only, not in front of the D. I can just press the F4 key one time. It's a toggle. So it will just select the uh, dollar sign under the D1. The same here for uh, B2. I, when I copy this thing over, this thing only wants to look at that cell as it goes down, but but, but it wants to stay in column B. So I won't, all I need to do is have the dollar sign in front of the B. I'll press the F4 key a couple times, one time, two time, and we just have B2. So as this formula gets executed as it goes down, it'll stay within this column B, but it will go to B2, B3, B4, B5, right? Now that's one argument. I want to make sure that that argument is true. And what Anne is looking for is saying, uh, are the arguments within the this particular function, is it true? That's supposed to be true. And then it's going to execute what kind of format. The other function that we, the other argument that we want to add in there is uh, another one saying, if this is uh, also true, if that particular cell is less than or equal to the time out, right? Is 9 a.m. less than or equal to 5 p.m.? In a case, in this case, it is, right? If that's the case, then I'll execute this format. Also, what I want to do here is put the dollar signs in front of the appropriate cells. I'll press the F4 key again, and I just want it in front of the number, E1, right? The dollar sign is supposed to be in front of E1 because as it gets copied over, uh, the row once it wants to stay the same, but the columns are going to be different. It's going to go to F1, G1, H1. Dollar sign in front of the 1 just means that it's going to stay within that row. Now for C2, we'll do the same thing here. Press F4 twice because I want the column to stay static, but I want the row 2 to be dynamic. So C2, it will go to C3, C4 as the formula gets copied over to the cells. I just need to close the parentheses now and click the format. So when it looks at these two arguments, D1 and B2 and E1 and C2, it wants to make sure these both are true. That's what the AND function is for. It's looking to see if these arguments both are true. And if that's the case, then let's apply the formatting. So I'm going to apply the formatting. I'm just going to create some default gray. Click OK and click OK. And now you notice that it has selected everything, right? So to see if this really worked, we're going to take a look and see if the particular cell, if I change it, will also be true. So this is 8 to 5 here, and it applies it here. In essence, we really don't need to apply it here because um, this, in, in essence, says 5 to 6, right? Because it's also looking at cell N1. So what we're going to want to do is probably take this cell and clear the formatting, all right? Clear any formatting. We don't need it there because really it's only 8 to 5. So this cell is implicitly implicitly saying 
the hours four to five, this one's saying three to three to four, etc. Right? So we really don't kind of need this there. But this kind of applies here, right? So if I change this to maybe eight to three PM, press tab, now you notice that it has signified this particular row as eight to three PM and it's kind of scheduled that. Now this particular Gantt chart is also a scheduling chart, so we kind of have an idea where there's overlap and where there's not overlap, right? Now all it's left to do is kind of just pretty this up. So what I can do is take, select this particular range. Let me press the control key because I also want to select that particular cell and maybe I'll put a border there, right? So let's select that and have a border on all four sides. Let's get rid of the other grid lines here so it looks a little nicer. View and unselect that and we have our grid lines here. And let's make this a little bit more pretty. Go to home, my cell styles. Yeah, let's make this an accent too, right? So now we have our kind of nice little scheduling, right? So if this person decided to uh, work from maybe uh, 8, 8 a.m., 8 a.m., right? You can see we've kind of got everybody working pretty much the whole day when you think about it, except for this person at row six, right? And one thing we also can do is if we didn't want to keep typing this in, and our assumptions are that people are going to either work from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., we can make this a drop down, right? So to make that a drop down, what I need to do is select this range and go under data. And under the data tools, go to data validation and create a list. What I'm going to do is allow a list. And what this list is, is it's going to list out values that we can select from. And I can create a list somewhere else, but I've got a nice handy dandy list over here, right? I have people working from eight to four, and this is gonna be my schedule. So I'm just gonna select this eight to four and click okay. And now you notice that if I want to select this, I can, I can always type it in like 9 a.m., right? Or since I selected it in the cell, I can select my drop down, right? This is my data validation list. I can say 12, and then I can say timeout, maybe this is 12 to three, and it's selected 12 to three here, right? So that's kind of a nice way to do it. Instead of having people type in, you can just select the drop down in each of these areas to give you that drop down because it's taking it from this particular set of values here, right? So that's the way that we can create a Gantt chart to indicate time in a day. And we can also use this particular solution if we want to see people's schedules. Oh, what happened here? Oh, this is 9 a.m. Of course, that would not really work because 9 a.m. doesn't really happen, right? 12 p.m. to 9 a.m. doesn't really give you a good value set. If I click 3 p.m., now you see 12 to 3 p.m. there. So again, this is kind of a really quick and dirty way to create a Gantt chart that takes into account time in a day, or you can use this to represent scheduling for a day. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.